Women are interested in men based on three criteria. The first is their ability to signal resources. The second is intelligence. And the third is kindness. It doesn't matter how rich or how smart you are. If you're an asshole or you're not kind, people eventually don't want you as a mate. And unfortunately online, it's very difficult to signal two and three. So you can signal one. And when everyone has access to everyone, women who have a much finer filter for mating because the downside of sex is so much greater for them if they get pregnant. So they have much finer filter. They end up all being drawn or expressing interest to a much smaller group of individuals. So what the dynamic is, you have 50 men on Tinder, 50 women on Tinder. 46 of the women will express all of their interest to just four men, which leaves 46 men vying for the attention of just four women. And as a result, in America, one in three males under the age of 30 has not had sex in the last 12 months. And I find people hear the term sex and their mind goes different places. I think of it as the key step to an elemental foundation of any society and that is relationship. So in the US, what's happened with online dating is it's amazing for the top 10% of attractiveness of men. It's okay for the top half. It is a disaster for the bottom half. And when I say attractiveness, I mean by very crude metrics. So if you're Tinder profile, I went to MIT, I just started at KKR, and my Rolex accidentally is visible in my profile picture. Living in uh, Beverly Hills, you're gonna get a massive amount of attention. The bottom half who are not able to express anything other than wealth, which they may not have, are totally shut out of the market. And the knock-on effect here is that we're producing too many of what is the most dangerous person in the world, and that is a young, broken, alone man. When you hear about mass shooters in the US, you know who they are before you know who they are. So we're producing uh, an enormous cohort of economically and emotionally non-viable men. And I think it's bad for society. I think it creates an existential risk for us. I think women, as a result, uh, don't have as many, uh, find there just aren't as many economically or, emo or emotionally viable men as they would like. Women are graduating at double the rates of college as men now. For every one male graduate in the next five years of college, there's gonna be two women. And you think, well, okay, it's time women, <laughs> it's time women leveled up. They're finally getting their due, okay. But the, this has just realized this has huge societal impacts because women made socioeconomically horizontally and up, men horizontally and down. In some, women with college degrees typically aren't interested in men without college degrees. So we're seeing less household formation, lower birth rates, and these things usually stunt an economy. Uh, so I think it's a big issue. Uh, and again, I think it comes down to providing more young, more opportunity for young people in general. I think if you had sort of gender specific affirmative action towards men, it would just become so politicized and heated that it wouldn't be worth it. I think you need a massive leveling up of all young people that I think will disproportionately help young men.